Welcome back. We're going to be in Psalm 19 tonight. We're glad you've chosen to tune in again. Uh, we encourage you to check out the other videos in the Psalm series and uh, be sure to like and subscribe. That way you'll be notified every time we upload new content or go live with one of our live stream services. Um, we're going to read now Psalm 19. We're going to make a few uh, comments and applications on meditating and internalizing God's word. Psalm 19, the heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours, pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. The voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their utterances to the end of the world. In them he has pl placed a tent for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of its chamber. It rejoices as a strong man to run his course. It's rising from one end of the heavens, and its circuit to the other end of them. And there is nothing hidden from, his, from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, they are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is, re is warned, and keeping them is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Equip me from hidden faults. Also keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me. Then I will be blameless. I shall be acquitted of great transgression. Let the wor words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. There's a lot of great things we could point out in this psalm, and I want to make just a three or four points and maybe an application from the, the middle part and, and, the, and the request at the end of this psalm. The first six verses reminds us that all of creation from the greatest to the smallest of the heavens to the outer expanses, the black holes and stars and the Grand Canyon and everything in between, declares the glory and wonders of God. That nature itself bears the mark of the Creator and its handiwork, its balance, its, its uh, complexities, its, its design. There is nothing that God has not made that does not attribute glory to Him. And we serve such a God that would be that would make such beauty and would make such a creation that would tell of his glory. Paul said in Romans 1 that just by the creation, it declares God's invisible and divine attributes. And just by creation, there is enough evidence for us to be convicted of either belief or non-belief in God. But creation itself can only get us so far. While creation declares the wonders of God, it cannot reveal the details about God or the nature and character of God. That's where God has given us his revelation. Uh, the middle part of the psalm, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The precepts of the Lord are simple, are, are right. The commandments of the Lord are pure. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. It's through the Word of God that we are able to come to know God in any meaningful way. It's through the Word and Word itself that we are able to be corrected and to be molded and to be transformed into the people that we ought to be. It's through the knowledge of God that we can have the true biblical fear of God and that we can sing along with the psalmist that God's judgments are true and righteous all together. The psalmist continues on 10 and 11, talks about how we are enable, unable by ourselves to really be of any good judge of character of ourselves, that we need the word to convict us. We need the word, as he says in verse 12, to discern our errors. We need the word to acquit us of hidden errors or hidden faults. We need God's providential care and, and guidance from his word to keep us back from presumptuous sins. That is, those are the sins that are committed on, but based on we think we know better than God. The word of God tells us that we don't know better. We see all these examples of the Old Testament, people who thought they knew better, but 
They didn't. And we can learn from them. And that comes from, again, God's revelation. And it's only through the knowledge of God's word that we can sing purely, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And maybe the application for us is found in verse 14. There's a request made by the psalmist to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable on your side. That is, let my speech bring you glory and let the, the deep thoughts of my inner being, let them also be acceptable to you. Let them bring you glory. And that comes through, again, the meditation study of God's word, of eternalizing God's word in our hearts. And maybe the application is we pray verse 14 this week. And we start working on maybe finding a, one or two verses that speak to an area that we need to grow in and start internalizing and memorizing those verses, quoting them to ourselves throughout the day and working on internalizing that word in our hearts. That way God may use that to continue to mold us and to shape us. We appreciate you tuning in every week. We hope this was a benefit to you and edifying. And we want you to know that God loves you and have a great week and God bless.